Hello, this is Mike Doe at Melco, part of the applications team, and today I'd like to give you an overview of the Bravo OS software. What we'll be overviewing is a package C, so the flex level of Bravo OS. So make sure that you talk to your dealer about which package you're looking at getting. To start with, we'll start up in the left-hand corner of the software, and we'll just kind of walk through all the different functions and features of the software. So to begin with, um, you know, you've got your file. Uh, really what you're looking at is you have two different ways to load a design into it. You can use load design and basically you just go in, uh, select your drive on your computer that you're looking for and then the file that you want. So maybe we want to do uh, something like this star. We would just click on it, It'll give us a review over here of it, um, tell us a little information about stitch count and size and then we just click open you'll see that design just load right onto the screen. We'll get into details on color changes and color sequence here in a minute, but let's just keep moving on. The other way that you can do it is there's what's called a load design wizard. This will actually walk you through the entire process of setting a design up, um, setting up the color sequence, speed, all the different uh, things that you may go through and change when you load a new design. So for example, uh, we'll load back in Earth Day so once that design is loaded, it'll ask us what our color sequence is on it. So we might say, you know, uh, color number one is going to be on needle one, and color number two is going to be on needle seven. You can also clear those and do that one more time. Needle one, needle seven. We hit apply and OK. Uh, then we hit next. Um, you can actually set, before we hit next, I almost missed it, you can actually change your hoop right here. So. Let's say we're going to use the uh, 7.02 inch round hoop and select that and then hit next. And you have the, the maximum speed. Um, that's going to stay wherever you had it. You'll, you'll actually change that on the main screen. We'll come back to that when we uh, describe it in the screen itself, the overview. And then you have active feed. Um, the active feed, if you're running an auto, really you don't need to change this, this number. And we'll talk about that here in a minute. If you're running in standard, um, you'll want to take and adjust that according to how thick your garment is. We're, we're going to review that here in a second, so hold tight on that one. Once you have those set, we'll go back to auto. Auto is much better than standard. It allows the, the machine to do a little bit of the thinking for you in case you have uh, different types of thicknesses that you'll be sewing on. And then once you're done with that, really that's it. So when we reload this, you'll notice that the hoop changed. Um, you'll notice that our new color sequence came in. You know, everything is ready to go. Um, so from there, let's go back up to the top and start our overview. So that's really file. That's the two things you can do in there. There's all kinds of print information, but we won't go into that in this, in this uh, video. The next one is view. Um, in here, if one of your uh, different windows disappears, this allows you to bring those back. Uh, commands. So what this allows you to do is we can actually do a trace, uh, do an applique, um, we can center the hoop if it's not centered, um, and, and we'll, let's walk through a couple of these. So we're going to take an off center the design, so now you see the design is not centered anymore. You also see that that dash line turns solid, um, so the machine actually has true hoop limits um, and will not uh, take and spike a hoop if you have the right one on there. So real good safety feature. Um, so to recenter this, we have a couple different options. One, we can go to this commands and we can click on center hoop. It gives you a little warning so that if somebody is working on the machine, they don't, uh, they don't get hurt. So when we hit OK, you're going to see the machine move. So here we go, we'll hit OK. The machine moves back to center and then you can see on screen that the design is centered. Let's move that back off for a minute because there's another way you can do it same button instead of going to commands all the command tools are right here so we can hit center again get our little warning and it's back let's move it off center one more time and if you'd rather do it from the keypad you can take and push the frame and the bullseye frame and bullseye and in your manual there's actually a shortcut um, for the keypad on the different kinds of key commands that you can do to do different things. So that's kind of the commands. Um, something else that you can do is a trace design. 
So if you want to see where that's going to fall on a product, you can take and hit trace and the machine will actually trace the design out um, and it's a true shape trace instead of a lot of the uh, other embroidery companies will just do a square around that we actually take and do so if it's a circle we'll do a circle around that outer edge um, if it's a you know an oval um, or some weird shape we actually do the actual shape of the outline of the design so it's it's giving you a true outline um, trace instead of you know just kind of a a square um, trace. Uh, the other thing that we can do is we can do an applique and what that'll do is as soon as I hit OK that's going to make the machine move out so that we can get into the product a little bit easier to either address something or lay down a piece of applique. So as soon as I hit OK you'll see that the machine moves out. The machine is in out position. On the screen we actually have a hit OK to return sewing position so when we click on OK, you'll see that that machine moves right back into position. You'll see that there. The other thing we can do is if uh, we need to, if we need to return to the origin, and what that means is wherever the design was set to begin to sew as your origin, we can take and click that button also. Let's say the design is in the middle of sewing and we want to reset it we can reset the design with this and there's a real nice uh, flyout tooltip for each one of these so you'll see reset design return to origin and then if let's say if we need to do a trim on the machine we can actually hit trim immediate a lot of these commands there's also shortcuts so check out that uh, you know the key command shortcuts um, for that so that you know if you'd rather do it over at the machine instead of walking back over to the computer you have that ability to do that so moving on from there, the next thing that we've got on our list is um, the machine list. <laughs> Funny to say. Um, so here, let's say that you have more than one machine. They would actually show up and they'll show their serial numbers here. So on the Bravo OSC package, you'll be able to hook up up to four machines. You'll network up to four machines on one computer. Um, A and B package, once again, it uh, does not have that ability, so make sure you check with your dealer um, if there's something of interest. But they would just show up, and then you can take and just select the machine and take and load to that particular machine as needed. Moving down a little bit further, you'll see the serial number of the machine at the bottom here. And this actually just gives you kind of a step-by-step -step events that the machine went through um, in, in its recent history. Um, this is good if you want to know, okay, did I reset the design or did I not? You can look at this list and see if it's been reset. And then just moving a little bit to the right here, here's your speed. So speed can be changed also in two places, actually three places. One is down here, and we can go down. So you can see that number is dropping. We'll go back up to 1100. You'll also notice that over here on the right, well, we'll get to here in a minute, but we'll go ahead and address, I can change it over here as well. And then the last one is, is if I go over to the keypad again, and the shortcut's on that list, I can push the adjust button and the down arrow, and you'll see that that speed is going down on the screen. If the machine was sewing, you can push this or any of those other two at that time, and you'll see it, and here the machine actually speeding up or slowing down. So that's speed. Um, the next thing over is kind of a job progress. Once again, the flyouts are a great thing. So if you're kind of confused on what something is, best thing to do first is to take and put the mouse over it and it'll give you a description of what that is and it, more than likely that'll help you figure out what, what that tool's used for. This actually will give you um, kind of a, a range. So if the design is about halfway done, this side of it would show black, um, and the other side would show uh, still white, and it would say 50% here. The next part is actually showing you what um, color is currently being used, um, and then the current needle. So you can see that we're on needle 9, um, and it says needle 9. So if I take and move this over, let's say to, to needle 7, you can see that that changed. If I move it again, 
now we're at needle five. So you can actually see what current needle is, is uh, on the machine. And then position X and Y, um, this is only important if uh, you know, you're really trying to hit a certain geographical region inside the hoop. Most people don't use the XY position. Um, they'll, they'll use visual instead of using XY. And then let's jump into the main screen for a minute. So we kind of briefly hit this, but let's, let's talk about it some more. It's really neat that on the screen you actually get a display of what your hoop is that you've got. Um, and then the dash line represents the actual sew field. So everything inside the dash line is your sew field. In between the dash line and these two solid lines is an area that has to be left for the presser foot to be able to clear that, that hoop. And so if I take and move the design over a little bit, once again, you'll see that dash line turn to solid, meaning that the hoop is, um, you know, the design is outside the hoop limits. If I was tried to press start, um, when something like this is happening, you'll actually get a real big hoop limit detected pop up on your screen. So it won't even start. So you don't have to worry about ruining a garment with getting some stitches in until the region where it's out of hoop limit hits. Um, that's a really neat feature because I can't tell you how many times before I was working with Melco products, I would start sewing, I get three quarters of the way through a design, and all of a sudden then it would come up with a hoop limit. Um, and, and at that time I had to, you know, typically I try to rehoop it, but it, it's really hard to align after you've started. So if that comes up, you can press escape or click on cancel. We'll go ahead and center that back up. And then um, we'll kind of uh, tie in to this part over here. This is where we can select any of our different hoops. Um, so let's say that we wanted, um, you know, a, a slim line. Um, or a round hoop at a different size, maybe 8.19, uh, or we wanted a rectangle hoop, maybe the 3.5 by 5.5, um, or a mighty hoop. The mighty hoops are also in here. So you can select from a lot of different hoops. So once again, this list is going to vary from packages, so make sure that you talk to your dealer about what hoops are available for your different packages. Um, but the real nice thing is, is once I select that, you know, I've got a preview of that hoop on screen. I've got my true hoop limit, so I can squeeze out as much area um, inside that before I have to re-hoop. Um, instead of typically, you're going to hit corners um, or you're going to be very limited in what you can do inside that hoop. So it's real nice to have true true hoop limits. The next part we talked about already is the speed. Going down a little bit further is our color and needle information. We hit this when we were in the advanced um, or the uh, uh, low design wizard, but if we go in there, if we click on color sequence, what this is doing is, is it's giving us a preview of our color palette on the machine. So if you look at this area here, and then you look over at the machine, you'll actually see that they represent uh, very well. Um, so if I'm setting up colors for a design, for example, this design that I've got loaded has nine colors. Um, I can look at the machine and say, okay, you know, uh, the light blue is on needle six, so I can do a clear all, and I can do needle six. The yellow is on needle one. Uh, purple is on needle four, so I'm just kind of looking. Uh, the next one is kind of a pink. That is on needle seven. A little bit deeper pink, and for that, we're going to go ahead and use a red on needle 10. Um, if I needed to, I showed you how to change color um, in the uh, previous video on the overview of the Bravo machine. Uh, at that point, uh, we are at the blue, so we could take and use the maybe the sky blue up in needle 11. Uh, we need a brown. Uh, for this, we'll go ahead and use that kind of dark brown on needle 8. And then a green that we just put on, needle three, and then black, needle nine. So we just set up our color sequence, and you know that's that's pretty much it. Um, the other nice thing is we can put in an applique inside of these, uh, inside of this color sequence if we need to lay something down. If we need to change a cone of thread, or for some reason have the machine kind of pause 
or hold while the design is sewing, we can put that into the color sequence. So for example, I'll just double click on uh, color sequence two or needle one, and we can just click on hold. And now that will give us a hold between needle or color sequence one and color sequence two. To get rid of it, I can just click on it and press erase and it's gone. Same thing applies to the applique. So that's kind of the uh, overview. The, the, the last thing I'd like to show you inside the color sequence is you have this design colors down here. You can actually click on active colors. Um, and in the case of this design, uh, it's got all the, all the colors there. But this allows you, let's say you're using black four or five times in a design. Instead of having to assign those colors every single time, you could just take and drag this up and it puts that black onto that cone. Um, we can do that with all of our colors. So we can go nine, we can take three and put up on um, number three. Um, actually, I think that is up on number eight. So like that, yep, as I look at the machine. Then we can do sky blue over here. Um, pink was the Dark pink was the red. Uh, we can do this one. And then the purple is over here. Yellow is needle one. And then the light blue is needle six. Um, and so if you do that and you go, you know what? Needle three has got the wrong color on it. You can always click on reset thread tree. Um, but this allows you the ability to kind of see what color without looking over at the machine again what colors on what needle. So kind of a cool thing, active colors. And once you do that, then you can hit apply now and it'll go through and automatically set your color sequence off of what colors you set up on the palette. So that's active colors inside of uh, settings under color sequence. We'll go ahead and hit okay. And uh, from there, we'll talk about active feed. And so this is the important part that I wanna talk about. There's several different fields in ActiFi, and the first one just has given you an indication where the feed system is. And once again, it's based off of points, and a point is worth a tenth of a millimeter. And so what's happening is the system will look at it in auto mode, and it'll say, okay, I need to feed four points of thread for this stitch. And you'll see this number change quite a bit as it's sewing, as it kind of, uh, you know, puts more thread into the system or sees that it needs to put less thread into the system, it, it will do that on its own, which is great because as an embroiderer, as a, you know, as a, just a sewer, you, you, you always have to be on those tension ops to make sure they're right. This does it for you. The important one is the minimum preset. So this is where you're gonna take and go, hey, my thickness of my material on this t-shirt is four points. So we'll just set this at four. And what that'll do is it won't allow the lower limit to drop below three. So it allows it to go one point below what you set your minimum at, but typically it'll stay right there at your lower limit. If you need to, you can actually click this box and set your upper limit. So if you don't want it to go above, let's say 10 or 15, you can do that. And, and in some cases with different applications like micro chenille and things like that, that's when you would use that maximum. From there, you'll have a graph down below that actually walks you through what the, the active feed system is doing. So what this number up here is going up and down, this, uh, as we like to call it, the EKG monitor, um, the stitch monitor, so maybe it's the SKG monitor. Um, you're watching that go. And then going down from there, you've got your status. So your runtime, how long the design's been running, and how much more time it's going to take before it's finished. This is just a, um, a, an educated guess on it. Uh, if you slow the machine down, obviously it's going to take a little bit more time. If you speed it up, there's a good chance that the, the time of the design is going to go down. Your stitch count and where you're at right now, we're at stitch zero. The size of the design, um, I'm sorry, the position, X, Y, once again, most everybody uses visualization and not the X, Y. And then the design size in inches. And for some reason, if you're more of a metrics type person, you can always go up to tools, you can go to options, and you can uh, go here to measurement units, 
And in design size, you could change this to centimeters. Um, same thing with the hoops. We could change that to centimeters. Hit apply and OK. And now as we look, that, look at that information, it's going to give it to us in centimeters. Your design size still shows in inches. Um, the inches over here, but really that 9.61 by 9.49, that's in centimeters, um, not inches, just so you know. So that is an overview of OS. A lot of great features. Um, the nice thing about it is you only need to use certain tools at certain times. It's very simple to, uh, to learn uh, and, and start you know, producing. Thank you very much.